I was watching my buddy Sean over at Retro Reminiscence and recently he posted a video called Five Easy Video Game Bosses. Well, that got me in the plagiarizing type mood so I thought I would do a similar list in response to his video. Now in this video I'm focusing on only Super Nintendo bosses while in his video he focused on bosses from all kinds of different consoles. The bosses in this video are not featured in his video so when you're done watching my ugly ass why don't you head over to Retro Reminiscence, watch his video, give it a like and throw my boy a sub if you haven't already. I just want to make clear that this is not a list of the easiest Super Nintendo bosses, but rather just some bosses who I felt were on the easier side. After all, I'm only one guy and I haven't played every Super Nintendo game, and even if I had, well, I'm still restricted to my limited memory. Before we get to the list, I just want to ask that if you like my content, please make sure to like and subscribe, as well as hit that bell notification so you stay up to date with Ron Man Gaming. Alright, let's start the list off with a Bobo from Battletoads Double Dragon. A Bobo happens to be the first level boss, and even though Battletoads Double Dragon is a super hard game, a Bobo is a really easy boss. Quite a few of the bosses in this game are easy peasy, but a Bobo is perhaps the easiest of all. All you need to do is spam the dash attack, and within a matter of seconds, you're kicking his ass off the spacecraft. Even Professor T-Bird comments on how easy a Bobo is. Mega Man X3 is a very difficult game and perhaps the most difficult Mega Man game on the Super Nintendo. However, in most Mega Man games, if you have the proper weapon, most boss fights can be made much easier. In the case of Mega Man X3, not only can you easily kill the Blizzard Buffalo without his weakness, you can easily kill him with just one hand on the controller. Once the fight begins, climb up the wall and allow him to dash to the left. Once he's against the wall, just stand in front of him and shoot a charged blast, then jump. As long as you make sure to jump after each time you shoot, Blizzard Buffalo will turn around and attempt to go the opposite way, but because he's against the wall, obviously he'll have nowhere to go and you may continue shooting and jumping. The reason this happens is because he thinks you're jumping over him, which causes him to turn around to follow you. This was most certainly a programming oversight, but at least it's a useful one. You can trap him in this loop and literally beat him with one hand. Salvo the Slime is the big boss in World 1 of Yoshi's Island. Once you enter his domain, Kemek shows up and uses magic to turn a nearly harmless ball of slime into a huge ball of slime which, oddly enough, happens to be even less dangerous. Salvo himself can't directly cause any damage to Yoshi, however, the small slimes who come from Salvo still can. The most dangerous thing about this fight is the potential to fall in lava, but even then, it probably won't happen. All you really need to do is throw a couple eggs or spit a few slimes at him, and that's it. Here's another game that, even though it's tough as nails, happens to feature a boss who is so easy, she kind of doesn't feel like a boss. Medusa is the boss in the second stage of Super Castlevania 4, but in a weird twist, you fight her in the middle of the stage, not at the end. Now she's easy no matter how prepared you are for this fight, but if you enter her area with the triple shot cross, it's possible to kill her so fast that you'll barely even get a glimpse of her. We all know that Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is an RPG for beginners, and therefore, very easy. But even still, why is it that the final boss happens to be the easiest boss in the whole game? He's not supposed to be, but thanks to what I assume is a glitch, the cure spell does crazy damage to the Dark King. If you watch closely, you'll see that Phoebe's cure spell actually cures him. It's only when the main hero casts cure that it actually causes damage. This is why I assume it's a glitch. Either way, you can kill the final boss with no effort at all. Heck, you could probably beat this fight in your sleep, and I'm not even kidding. Alright guys, that's all I have today. Thank you so much for watching. I want you to throw down in the comments some bosses who you think are really easy. Please like and subscribe, make sure to check out Retro Reminiscence, and I'll see you next time.